guys welcome back to my channel i was just sitting here and i was thinking that i do want to talk about the father wound i'm ready so a father wound really develops when you have like an absent father in your life you know what i mean whether he was in your life or not my case is that he was you know in and out of my life uh i lived with his mother and you know he would come sometimes and you know, give me gifts or whatever and leave, you know what I mean? But it was deeper than that. He was really abusive, physically, emotionally, mentally. And it really staggered me in my life's purpose. He really, like, he kept me in this mind state where I felt like I was unworthy. And just... I couldn't be myself. I'm a traitor now. <laughs> <laughs> Growing up, I always was closer to my father than my mother. Because my father was able to, you know, rain this materialism on me. This love. This superficial love. You know what I mean? And I loved, I took a liking to, you know, materialism. After that, I was really materialistic. I grew up materialistic. And, and I would just ask him for these things. And he would be able to, you know, sometimes provide them for me. And that made me feel good. Growing up, I like I realized as a teenager that materialism doesn't even matter. Like that shit doesn't matter. Like none of it. And I remember just growing up, my dad, he would be like, he would say things like, never share our business, never tell anything. And he told me one day, he was like, never share your feelings because nobody cares. So that really staggered me, not having a mom or a dad to open up to and express myself to. Um, that caused me to really hold in all my emotions and become emotionally unavailable. I would sit alone by myself and just sit with these feelings and sit with these sudden depressions and wonder why it's happening and not know how to combat it, but just, just sit in it, you know what I mean? As a kid, I was just sitting in my trauma. I was sitting in it, straight up. I had nobody to talk to. And his mom, my grandmother, she was abusive too. She was really abusive. And she would just sit on the couch and just drink beers all day. Just lay on the couch, drink beers, and talk down on me while he wasn't there. You know what I mean? I would ask to call him. Sometimes she would be like, no, you can't call him. And when I did get the chance to call him, he wouldn't answer. I would call him like 20 times a day. Like, Daddy, are you coming ever? Leaving him voicemails. and You know where he would be? At a women's house. Women's. Girlfriends. And these girlfriends, he had multiple girlfriends. He just had, like, so many. And on top of having so many girlfriends, he would bring me to each and every one of them. Sometimes in the same day. And he would show me that he wasn't ever available you know what I'm saying? Like, to be loyal, you know what I mean? He was never emotionally available. Nehemiah told me, I'm basically, I'm a piece of shit, you know what I'm saying? That's cool. I've done everything for you guys. That's cool. You know what I'm saying? When you get down here, you have nothing. So you don't think about being here, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't know what I did to you to make you feel this way. You treated me terribly and you, you chose your you girlfriend over me. me. I, don't, I don't have a girlfriend. I have six girlfriends. So how do I pick Tasha over you when I have six different girlfriends? You I still chose her. Girlfriends. I, have six, I don't even live at the house. I have six different girlfriends. How did I choose over you? I have six different girlfriends. You treated her way I better than me. You called me a liar over her. When did I call you a liar? When did I call you a liar? You Just tell me when I called you, you a liar. Said, you said that I stole weed from you, and then you, you called me a liar for me. that. My things are empty. I did, me and we my did stole not. all Nana's clothes to the closet. I don't know if you did it or not. I'm just saying you was there with no, her. No, we didn't, My Dad. things were like this full of weed. 
Now we like didn't this. touch it at all. I was with Nehemiah the you whole time. We was in the room. How you know? No, we, we didn't touch it at you all. You sleeping. How you know? No, so we who took it. We was both dead. Took Nobody it. took it. Somebody None took of it. us took it. Somebody took it. I don't, it doesn't even matter. Why don't you want to talk about that? You, you want to go there? Just go. And I seen this through him, and I'm like, damn, is this how other men are? I was like, dang, you know? My dad's like this. Who? What other men are just like this? I started attracting men like my father. Just like him. Like, just the same characteristics just you know people who couldn't settle down very handsome men who couldn't settle down and I, I found a liking to that because I was like oh this is familiar it was horrible you know what I'm saying it, it really put me through something like it made me feel unworthy again I was like damn I'm feeling unworthy again like how my dad used to make me feel and when my dad would bring me to these women he would first lecture me he would give me like this lecture before going to see them like don't tell any of my business da, 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 da. it would be like a fear tactic like i would just be in fear i wouldn't tell these girls that they were getting cheated on you know what i mean because i was fearful of what my father would do to me and it made me feel bad it made me feel like i was cheating too i was like damn like i can't even tell these girls they're getting done dirty I just got to sit back and love it, you know what I mean? And just go with it. I'm like, ha, ah, play with the kids. Like, ah, okay. And it was horrible. I was mad at my dad for so long for doing that to me. And I remember I was a little, little girl. And I remember I told one lady that she was getting cheated on, you know what I mean? My dad had me laid up with some red-haired lady in a bed with him. And I was just like, you cheated on one of my favorite, you know? girlies and i told her and i was like you know my dad is she done you know what i mean and i think you're a really good person so i think you should know this i was so little and i was aware you know what i mean and she she took that she's like, okay you know she i know she was heartbroken i could see it in her face for someone's daughter to tell her you know what i mean and she addressed him but she mentioned that i told her and that got me in trouble he was like he snatched the lollipop out of my mouth and he looked at me and he was like, you told her my business? And I was like, I said no. And then I said yes, because it was just the truth. And that scarred me as a little girl forever. I was like, damn, like. And he kept cheating and he kept bringing me to women even after that. But he would always bring it up that I told on him. He would be like, Patrick said this and that's why I don't take her. Da -da -da -da, and that's why they don't buy her this. Like it was like a punishment. Because I let a woman know that she was being cheated on. That scarred me. I was like, damn, like, he's really not a good guy. I saw that my dad was not a good man after that. He wasn't a real man, you know. And I seen men in his light. I was like, damn, every man is like him. And I just attracted men just like him because I thought that. And I remember at one point in my life, my teens, my dad was with this woman. Her name was Tasha, and she was a gold digger. She stole all his money from him while he was in jail at one point. And it left me and my siblings with nothing. We had no food and shit. We had no clothes. We were sleeping on the floor at one point with bed bugs just eating us alive. You know what I mean? And... She stole all our dad's money and put herself through nursing school. And when he came back out of jail, he was like, yeah, she did that for her, but he, she going to take care of me. I was like, really? She took all your money, left your kids in a, in a really horrible situation, and you're going to still be with her? He went on to have a baby with her, my, my little brother, and I love him to the moon and back. I used to take care of him as a baby. But I'm going to delve into that more. But, you know, he got back together with her, st saw she was a bad person and still continued to be with her. Um, they would do drugs together and all that. I moved in with him and her and her kids. And it was hell on wheels. He made me clean up after everybody. He was, like, making me into a slave. He would make me clean their laundry. He would make me do the kitchen every day, you know, and expect me to be, you know, happy. 
I was depressed. I was smoking weed in the bathroom when he wasn't looking, just hitting a blunt and shit because I just was so depressed. I was like, God, at least let's smoke. You know what I mean? Like, let's smoke at least. And that was a sad mindset that that really drove me down a path that I never wanted to go. But I started to be more depressed every day. I was just laying in my room at points, just in the dark, just like, damn, this is my life. My dad would always promise us, like, a beautiful life. Me and my siblings, we would be walking to school. He would be like, we're going to live in a big house and be all happy and be together. And all we got is us. And once he did that to me, he showed me. He didn't ever care about me. He's yelling because they were calling and I was in the bathroom and I guess they thought I was in the bathroom. They're calling his name. Why would I respond? I didn't know they were calling for me and he's getting mad, cussing me out while I'm using the bathroom. Get out of here. He would make me fold their clothes. For hours just standing there folding clothes everybody's clothes that I just washed his girlfriend's panties and shit like I was so taken back like is this really what my dad's making me do my dad would lash out on me like every day he would like just lash out on me he would shout at me and scream at me and just say all kinds of mean things and I, I kid you not it was all for nothing it was all because of what he was putting himself through with this woman who was really a bad lady. She was taking his anger out on just me in this house and all the kids would be watching and like it was a show for them to see my dad damage me. I couldn't forgive him for a long time. I had to leave him at one point and go and live with my grandmother who was also abusive, but you know, I could at least have my own room. The room that I had when I was living with my father and his crazy girlfriend. Um, I had like two doors and it didn't actually have a door. My door wasn't even on the hinges. <laughs> I had to move my door to the side. He never fixed my door. And he was a construction man. He never fixed my, you know, he was just like, well, you don't have a door. And they had the door. So they would be like, it was like a room that people had to walk through to get to where they needed to go. So I had no privacy at all. The kids would walk through my room and just stare at me and being depressed and shit. They would just be like, you okay? Like, like, just looking at me and just knowing that I'm going through hell. But wanting to just see how I'm really, you know, processing it. They knew that I was being treated bad, but they knew that they were getting the upper hand with my father. And he was buying them stuff. He was fulfilling their wishes. So it was entertainment for them. And that made me really, really sad. Like, I was like, I gotta leave because nobody cares about me in here. I remember at some points I would be, you know, just in my room, just trying to watch anime under my blanket, whatever, because I had nothing else to do. My dad would never let me go out or anything. And when I did, I would go to little parties, but be forced to take, you know, the little girl in the house, you know what I mean? But he would come in sometimes and be like, Come watch your brother. Come watch your brother. And I would. I don't care. I love him so much. Of course. I have so many videos of him, my little baby. And I could tell my little brother was never emotionally stimulated, kind of like me. Like, they would just always, you know, have him watching a TV or something. I would actually stimulate his heart. You know what I mean? He loves it with me. He loved me so much. I made him so happy. And when I would sit with them, they would go in the bathroom and do their drugs for hours. You know what I mean? And I would just be sitting with him, putting him to sleep. This was so many nights I've done this, really. Like, I can't even make this up. I was taking care of my baby brother since a little newborn. 
and treated like horribly still i was like the the black sheep i was the black sheep and i realized that and i was like oh yeah this is not working for me and then i went to my granny and she was like when i was living there my uncle his name was courtney penn i'm gonna say his name he was a predator and since little girls my uncle was preying on us you know what i mean laying out porn cds he had to and watching us to see our reaction and then he would bust in the room and look at us and stuff and ask us questions like he was just a full-on predator and he used to work with kids counseling too and got fired i wonder why but you know you can see why and at times i would be crying from when my dad would hurt me and i would you know go into my room he'd be like you want to talk like you could talk to me and i would be like no and you know we had a full-blown predator in the house and my dad knew he was a predator and he still wouldn't even you know come save me from what i was in he was preying on me my granny like called me a liar about it she was like she was like and you you and your sister are gonna lie about courtney and looked at me in my eyes for my reaction to see and I was just disgusted. I was like, because you know what your son was doing. I was disgusted. I was like, I couldn't say a word because she would just tell my dad. And my dad, you know, he loved to give out ass whoopings. He would just beat me if I said anything. I remember my dad beat me with a hanger right on my back and then took me swimming the next day. I was like... I remember he smacked me in my face. There were several times where he just smacked me right in my face. It hurt me. It made me so sad. And I remember he smacked me about school. And he was like, I had like a D in. And that was when I was living with him. And he was putting me through all this horrible stuff. Just making me clean and yelling at me and screaming at me every day. He would take my phone and smash my and then uh, act sorry the day after and stuff. Like, I remember he did that to me. He smashed my phone two times. But I remember when, you know, I was depressed and struggling at my lowest. And my dad was like, so what? what is it? Like, what do you need? Like, what's the problem? I was just like, I don't know. Me saying I don't know was just me not knowing how to express my emotions. Because growing up for so long, you know, not having a mom or dad to open up to because... You're being told, oh, don't say nothing. But it's like, okay, what's wrong? And I'm like, okay, um, what's wrong with me? I couldn't even express it. He smacked me. When I said I don't know, he smacked me. Two times. All right, my little face. I was like, I had no words. Only tears were falling down from my eyes. I was so surprised that I just couldn't even let my dad know I don't know what's going on with me you know what I mean I don't know what I'm being put through he smacked me he hurt me and then he choked me when I tried to get up and leave like he choked me with my coat and pulled it back on my throat and I was like this man cannot be my father he can't be my father he's hurting me he's hurting me emotionally and physically this can't be I was like, I'm going to go with my mom, knowing that she doesn't love me neither. I just said that because I wanted to just leave. And he was like, go with her. She don't care about you and telling me just mean things. I was like, damn, why is this my life? You know what I mean? And then I moved my little door to the side and went in my room. And I just laid there and cried. I didn't go to school that day. He was like, you're not going to school today. And I laid there and I cried. And then he brought me some food and then expected me to just be happy. But I was broken forever after that. I was like, damn, this is not my daddy. This is not the same man who loved me when I was young. Can't be. Being hurt by my daddy was like one of the worst things 
ever to happen to me in my life. Because I seen him as such a strong man. And I seen him as somebody who was here for me when nobody else would be. Even though he wasn't. I still viewed him in that light because I loved him. But when you're like a daddy's girl growing up, all you want to do is please your dad. So I did everything in my power to please my dad, and it was never enough. I remember, you know, I would begin, like, my report cards and stuff. I dreaded those times the most because I never wanted to disappoint my dad. And I remember I got one C, and he was like, this is nothing. Like, this is not good. C is like an F to me. And I was like, well, daddy, I tried my best. And he was like, your best isn't enough. And that hurt me so bad to hear my dad say that to me. Because my best was all that I could give. Even while I was being harassed and abused and that was my best sorry guys <laughs> that was my best <laughs> in the worst moment that was my best that I could give and it was good to me but then I started then I started being more, like, hard on myself. I was, like, less compassionate with myself. And that hurt me so bad growing up. Not being compassionate to myself and stuff. Like, that hurt me the worst. Nobody at school knew what I was going through. They just knew I was a funny girl. And they was like, oh, she's funny. That was the way I coped. Being hurtful, you know what I mean? <sighs> Laughing about it, you know? It was the fucking worst. I'd gather myself. But the whole daddy issues thing. I used to internalize that. Like daddy issues. Daddy issues. I have daddy issues. But that's not a good thing. That just means that your father was never there to cater to you. In the way that you needed. I recently. Not even recently. But like. Mm, May. May talked to my dad and and I told him I was like you're a coward for what you put me through you know what I'm saying you left me you're a coward you're not a man he was telling me all types of fuck yous and this and that and I was just like you're not a man I was like, you're gonna have to see me somewhere to know I made it because you was the one who was telling me my best wasn't enough you have to see me somewhere thriving without you because you told me all we got is us and you let this woman belittle me she was belittling me he was letting his girlfriend belittle me talk down on me and treat me less than <clears throat> i was so surprised when she would you know say little things to me that were like racist and rude i was just like taken back like damn you're disrespectful to me? The man's daughter that you love? And I would bring it to my father. He'd be like, she's just joking. Invalidation. Invalidated me completely with that. That one sentence. Invalidated me completely. I was like, wow. My father is not somebody I could be close to anymore. I could never be. Especially not now. I left. I had the choice to leave and come here to Tennessee. This is where I was born. And, you know, you see what's been happening to me. You see my other videos, how my family here has been treating me. They've been starving me and everything. I left from there to come here to be peaceful and to live in my truth. And I've been. And do you see how my family here is treating me, guys? I showed you. This is my purpose, to walk in my power and my faith.
certain times my dad was like hindering me from living how I wanted to and how I deserved to. He wasn't letting me get a job. He wasn't letting me express myself through my clothing. He was downing me. He was hurting me. In the most detrimental ways, he was hindering me from being me. And I forgive him. If you're watching this, I forgive you. But I'll never forget what you did. I accept you as you are. That's who you are. Thank you guys for listening to me. If you could relate with the whole father wound, you know, the whole absence you need to speak to your father if you can and express your emotions and what hurts and what's okay and what's not. I could never do that with my dad. He was so harsh and straight to the point and cut you off, won't let you say nothing. So I couldn't ever express my truth to him. It was hard. Because he was not able to listen. He, he didn't want to. He didn't want to hear it. Neither did my mom. You know what I'm saying? That's why I had none of them in my life for real. I didn't have no real parental figures. I was just on my own raising myself. You know what I mean? It was only materialism. Materialism for me. Because that's all that he could give me. And my, my siblings, like, loathe me because I accepted this materialistic side of him. But it was like, that's all I could get. You don't even know. That's all I could get from him. They was mad at me, like, you're spoiled. You get this. No. I'm just here. Do you feel me? I love you guys. Continue to heal. And I will, too. Thank you for listening to me. I love you. Bye. I gotta go work. <laughs>